All right, so today we're going to be able to factor polynomials. All right, um, so the warm-up today has some factoring in it, and we're going to be using this type of stuff when we get to the notes today. So I want everybody, hey, everybody, look over here, please. Okay, uh, again, it's more than nine weeks. Let's finish strong. Uh, Solving quadratics, yesterday's assignment, make sure you turn that in as well. So, number one, when we factor, okay, we're finding what common factors do these two terms have? So you're thinking what number goes into 3x and what number goes, or what goes into 3x and what goes into 9? So you tell me, what do you think goes into 3x and 9? 3, right? 3x, three so 3 goes into itself, 3, but 3 goes into 9. They don't have an x in common, so the only thing that I would say that they can be factored with is 3, okay? So here's what you can do, right? 3, and what you do is, it's kind of like doing distribution backwards, okay? You're taking 3 out of it, so if you divide both of these by 3, what's left over? So 3x divided by 3, what's left? Okay, the 3 taking away the 3 leaves you with just the x, okay? And then what's 9 divided by 3? 9 divided by 3 is also 3, okay? And you're left with that. I know you can do it the other way, like distribution, right? You could do 3 times x, that gives you 3x, 3 times 3 gives you 9. That, the, what we're doing is factoring is working backwards. Cool. Number 2, uh, what about this one? What goes into, what do you think? What goes into negative 4x and what goes into 16x squared? What can they both, well, think about it. What goes into 4 and what goes into 16? Take a wild guess. 4, yeah, 4 goes into itself and 4 goes into 16. Cool. And do you notice how both of them have an x? Okay. So not only does 4 go into both of them, but so does x. So I would say they're both divisible by, they both have a factor of 4x. So there we go. So here's the question. When I take out 4x, when I divide each term by 4x, what's left? So what's negative 4x divided by positive 4x? So 4 divided by 4 is 1, x divided by x is 1, but that negative sign stays there, so it's negative 1. Okay, and then over here, what's 16x squared divided by 4x? So 16 divided by 4, 4, right? Hey, 16 divided by 4 is 4, and then, now check this out. This was x squared, right, which is 2x is multiplying. If I divide by one of those x's and I remove one x, how many x's are left? One. Okay, so x squared divided by x takes away one of the x's, and now you just have x, okay? Okay, now keep this in mind as we do these notes, okay? We'll pass this out. Today does not have to be that difficult, but I'm telling you, people are struggling, people who are uh, struggling to focus. What can we do? Here we go. Uh, all right, now, to save us some time, I know you could read this, okay? And I'll go over it real quick, okay? But do y'all remember this standard format? It's called standard form of a quadratic. A x squared plus b x plus c. There are three numbers whenever you have this trinomial. There's a first number, second number, third number. Even if there's no number, there's an implied one, right? So 
what you do, okay, is what we're uh, what we're doing today is called the box method. Okay, so let's say you got a box, kind of like a window or something. Okay, whatever this is, step one is you put this in there. Okay. Step two is you place the C right there. Okay. So making your box is not that hard. You kind of first first term goes in the top left, last term goes in the top uh, bottom right. Then it says find the factors of AC. This is what we're going to be doing today. You see how it says A times C. Whatever these two numbers are, you got to multiply them and get a number. We're going to find the factors, make a list of them, and see which ones add or subtract to make B the middle term. Okay? Those two factors are going to go right here and right here. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Okay? Once you have that box filled in, then you're going to do what it says, factor the greatest common factor out of each column and each row. And those factors are going to make a binomial, and then the other factors are going to make another binomial. Okay, you're going to have two binomials. Now, all that is just a bunch of words. Okay, I wouldn't expect you to understand it just from hearing the steps. Now, you could look at this and you can see how they did it. But what I want to do is just immediately go to the back side. I want to just do an example together so you can see how it works, okay? Because this stuff is like too many steps to just like kind of save all in your brain all at once, okay? So everybody, flip it over to the back, please, okay? This has been giving me trouble all day. There we go. Okay, now, step one. The first two steps are really easy. Here's what I want you to do. Take your pen, so hopefully... Okay, underlined the A term and underlined the C term, okay? You're going to do some stuff with A and C. Now, first of all, this whole term goes in this top left box. Go ahead and write it in there. X squared. Easy, right? Right? All right. Next easy step. The 6 is going to go down here into this box. Easy, right? Okay, good. Okay, now the next step is not too hard. You just got to remember AC, okay? When it's hot in the summer, what do you turn on? The AC, right? What's cold? Same answer. The AC. What's cool? What's, what's Mr. G? He's cool like the AC, right? No one laughs, so y'all all believe it. All right, now... What we're going to do is A times C, right? So go and write A times C. Now here's the question. Don't get tricked. What is A? What is the number in front of X squared over here? If there is no number, what number goes right there? One. Write a one there. What's my C value? What's this last number? Six. So A times C is one times six. I hope y'all can help me out here. What's one times six? Are you sure? Everyone else, is one times six, six? Okay, good. So it is six. One times six is six. Now here's what I want you to do. Write that six right here. And what we're going to do is find all of the factors. Do you know that factors means multiples? What multiplies to make six? So start with the smallest number, one. One times what is six? One times six, right? Okay, check it out. One times six. Now, check this out. If you change both of those signs, they're both positive. If you change them both to negative, negative one and negative six, isn't negative one times negative six a positive six? It works out too, okay? So if you change both signs, it works. Okay, after one comes two. Does two go into six? Two times what? Two times three. And again, change both signs. Negative two, negative three, okay? 
Uh, that's about it. Those are all the factors that make positive 6. Now you tell me, which one of these options will add up to make B? What is B? 5, okay? I want to know down here, which one of these is going to give me 5 when I add them together. So if I add 1 plus 6, I get 7. And if I add negative 1 plus negative 6, I get negative 7. And uh, if I add 2 plus 3, what do I get? 5. Heck, yeah, that's what I want, right? Negative 2 and negative 3, that makes negative 5, and I don't need no negative 5. I need a positive 5, okay? So do you see how that works? I only need the ones that will actually give me the B value of positive 5, okay? So guess what's going to go into these two boxes? 2x and 3x. So you got to... Don't forget to add the x's, okay? These are going to be x's. So please don't forget that step. When you put these numbers in those boxes, you got to put them with an x. x. Add the x. All right? Now let me stop right here. Does do you think you can make the box the way we've done it so far? The first term, top left. The second term, bottom right. Multiply A times C, find all the factors, and see which ones make the middle term when you add them together. Don't forget to add an X, okay? If you can get that far, then you just have a few more steps, okay? But I know this is like a lot of steps, so it can be kind of like, oh, okay. check it out. What you're going to do, each row, in each column, you're going to factor, okay, like a warm-up. So think about, let's go left, let's go rows, okay, bottom row. 2x and 6. What is the common factor of 2x and 6? What goes into 2x and what goes into 6? 2, right? 2 goes into itself. 2 goes into 6. Now, what if you don't know how to find factors? Did you know a calculator can help you if you have one? Right? So check it out. Go ahead and write this at the top of your page. Menu 2-5. Okay. Let me pull up my calculator here. Now this only works for numbers. If You can't put X's into this, okay? But if I press menu, number 2 says number. Number 5 says greatest common divisor. GCD, okay? Watch this. If I want to know what the greatest common factor of 2 and 6 is, because for some reason if that's troubling me, okay, I'm going to press 2, comma, 6. And what's the greatest common factor of 2 and 6? Like you said, it's 2. Okay? Now, I hope you would just know that, but if you get like big numbers and you're kind of like, uh, menu 2, 5, type in the numbers, don't forget the comma. Okay, so anyways, 2x and 6, on the left side, go ahead and put 2. The greatest common factor of these two terms is 2, okay? Now, what about the top row? x squared and 3x, okay? When you're, when you're talking about a 1x squared and a 3x, 1 and 3 have no common factor besides 1. But do you see how they both have x's? That means x is a common factor. Cool? 1 and 3. 3 is not the common factor. 1 uh, one does not, 3 is not a factor of 1. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So anyways, x is the only thing they have in common. Now let's go vertically right here. x squared and 2x. The numbers in front don't have a common factor, but they both have an x. So go ahead and put x on the top. Okay, and then move over one, 3x and 6. What's the common factor between 3x and 6? So 2 doesn't go into 3. 3. 3 goes into 3. 3 goes into 6. Cool. And again, let's just say I don't really know what I'm doing. Menu 2, 5, I'm going to put 3, comma, 6. It's 3. Okay. 
Okay, so I've made my box, then I factored each column, I factored each row. Now I have two binomials. So the left side, do you see how that's an x and a plus two, and the top it's an x and a plus three, so they're positive. You're gonna put your final answer as two parentheses. Okay, so check it out. x plus two and x plus three. So you're going to end up, you start off with three terms, you're going to end up with two binomial, two termed parentheses, okay? All right. Do you think that's doable? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, not getting a lot of feedback. Y'all wait. We'll wake up. All right. Let's try example two. Y'all are, are nice and participating. Maybe we don't have to do example four. We can spend less time with me talking. Sound good? Or we can do more. I don't know. Okay. So example two. Here we go. First step. What, what did I do last time? What did I do with the x squared? What do I write the x squared? Top left. Right there. X squared. Go ahead and write it in there. Okay, that's the first term. That's the A. Where do I put this C term? Bottom right. Easy. This is the easiest step. Can y'all do the easiest step for sure every time? Okay. Uh, now, what was that? What, what did I need to multiply together? Because it was so cool. Like your teacher. AC, right? Dang, that's cold. Ice cold. All right. A times C. What is A? What number is in front of X squared here? No number means one. What's C? One times negative 20. What is one times negative 20? It's negative 20. We're going to factor negative 20. All right, so what multiplies to make negative 20? We're always going to start with the number one. One times what? One times what gives you negative 20? Negative 20, yeah. One times the same number gives you that number, right? One times negative 20. Remember, change the signs. So instead of positive 1 and negative 20, now we have negative 1 and positive 20. That also multiplies to give you negative 20. Let's try 2 now. 2 times what? Negative 10. And change the signs, negative 2 times 10. 3 does not work, but what about 4? 4 times negative 5, negative 4 times positive 5. Okay. So that's it for our factors. Now the question is, which one of these factors is going to add up to make B in the middle? 8. One of these, when I add them together, makes eight. So I'm going to just try the first one. One is negative 20, negative negative two. Negative one is 20, positive negative two. Two and negative 10 is negative eight. Negative two and 10 is negative two plus 10. Hey, that's what I need, right? So what I need to make B is negative two and 10. Cool? Okay, so those two numbers, negative 2 and 10, are going to go in the box, right? What do I have to put next to negative 2 and 10? Don't forget to add an x on them. So negative 2x, positive 10x, okay? All right, cool. Now, if you can get your box right, now you have to factor. You want to think what factors are on each row and each column. So the bottom row, negative 2, negative 20. What goes into negative 2 and negative 20? 2, right? Now here's the deal. On the outside, if that's a negative, guess what you got to put? A negative, okay? You need to match it up. So 2 goes into both of them. We're going to put 
negative 2 because if this is negative, this is negative. Okay, match the signs. Cool. Okay, what about above that? x squared and 10x. If there's, no, if there's no number in front of x squared, there's no number. Okay, but they both have an x. Cool. So x. Okay, what about vertically? x squared and minus 2x. What? Okay. Again, there's no number in front of x squared, so there's no number involved, but we're going to use x because they both have an x. Makes no sense. Okay. And then the last one, 10x and negative 20. What goes into 10x and negative 20? 10. 10 goes into 10. 10 goes into negative 20. The outside number, the one closest to the edge is positive, so write it as a positive 10. And that's it. Don't you see that we have a binomial x minus 2 and a binomial x plus 10? Cool. Okay. I'm going to do one more with y'all, example 3, and then I'll just, you know, I'll give you example 4 as a, something to write down. This example three makes it a little bit more challenging, so please make sure you're paying it close attention, okay? All right, first things first, where does the first term go? Hey, here we go. All right, so does everyone know the first term goes in the top left, right? Three X squared goes here. The last term, minus 4, goes here. That's my A. That's my C. I need to find A times C. What is A and what is C? Well, just, just the number. 3 times what? Negative 4. What's 3 times negative 4? Negative 12. Okay, so I want to find the factors. Of negative 12. Again, start with 1. 1 times negative 12, negative 1 times 12, right? What about 2? Two? 2 times negative 6, negative 2 times 6. What about 3? Three? 3 times what gives you negative 12? Negative 4, and negative 3 times 4. That's it, right? And I'm looking for which one gives me B when I add them together. B is negative 11. And the very first one, 1 minus 12, will give you negative 11 when you add them together. Okay? So make sure you put X's on them. So you have 1X here and negative 12x here. Cool? Now, when you're factoring this, be careful, okay? Stick with me, we're almost done. So, on the bottom, 1x and minus 4, okay? What's a common factor of 1 and minus 4? Let's, let's double check here. 1 and minus 4. 1 comma negative 4. What does it say? One, okay, if you have one for any of your numbers, that is the greatest common factor. There's nothing bigger than one that can go into one because it's one, okay? So as weird as it is, here's one. Now right above it, 3x squared minus 12x. Look at the numbers, 3 and negative 12. Those have a factor. What goes into 3 and negative 12? 3, right? And the, out, the edge is positive, so I'll put a positive 3. And don't they both share an x? So 3x. You see how that works? Look at the numbers first, see if there's a common factor, then see if they share an x. Use the outside edge sign. Okay. Now vertically, 3x squared, 1x, 3 and 1. Remember, if there's a 1, there's no number factor, but they both share an x. 
So I'm going to put x. And then out here, negative 12 and negative 4. What's the greatest common factor of negative 12 and negative 4? Positive 4. 4 goes into 12. 4 goes into 4. The edge is negative, so I want to make sure I use a negative 4. And since they both don't have an x, I'm just going to put that. Okay? Cool. Well, now that I have my edges, my factors written. Nice. Let's put this back. Let's go ahead and write our answer here. So we got okay, 3x plus 1 and then x minus 4. Cool. Oh my gosh, hold on one second. Stuff keeps moving and it's making me want to screech. All right, so that's it for number three. Number four, I'm going to write on here real quick. Just so that way you have it down in case you want it. So on this one, A is 3 times C is 16. 3 times 16 is 48. So the factors of 48 are 1 and 48, negative 1, negative 48, 2 and 24, negative 2, negative 24, uh, 3 times 16, negative 3, negative 16, 4 times 12, negative 4, negative 12, 6 times 8, negative 6, and negative 8. That's a lot of factors. Which one of these adds up to make the B value, 19? That's going to be 3 and 16. So 3x and 16x. Okay. And then the factors of this... The only factor that these both have is 1, as weird as it is. Okay. And then up here it's x. This one is 3x. And this one is 16. So you end up with x plus 1 and 3x plus 16. Okay. Now... You're going to use this. Okay, so you're going to use this information on the assignment. I'm going to pass it out. You have today. You'll have tomorrow, too. Again, follow the way we did these notes, and you'll be all right. If you get stuck on finding factors, look at your notes. Use a calculator if you need to. Ask me questions as needed. And here we go.